Hi, right, what's up everybody? So welcome back to a new video. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, definitely doing a lot better than before. Uh, so obviously this video is going to be about uh, Flatiron. If you see the title, uh, I'm going to be putting my personal opinion out there whether I thought Flatiron was uh, worth it or not. Um, worth the money and, and things like that. So obviously, I'm not gonna be going into detail too much. If you see me looking off to the side, it's because I'm looking at my notes on the computer, I'm trying to be professional. Um, I'm not gonna be going too much into detail uh, when it comes to what I learned and little specific things because uh, as a student and as a graduate, you sign a confidentiality, so NDA. Um, and obviously, if I do were to, like I don't think um, they would go after me so I'm such a small YouTube channel. But, you know, just to keep myself safe, I really am not going to go into detail about what I learned and, uh, like, every single little detail. I can go into, like, general stuff, but other than that, I can't really go into too much detail about what I learned. Uh, fair warning, this video will be a little bit long, longer than usual, because I am going to be explaining how it went down, uh, what I learned, and, like, and, and just, like, the general purpose of everything, and while going into too much too detail. Uh, so, yeah. All right, so getting started. Um, for my curriculum, uh, it was very different. It might be different now if you were to go to Flatiron and try to attend their program. Obviously for us, we were virtual because uh, at the time the pandemic hit hard um, and we were just recovering from, it was a year later after quarantine, so we were just recovering from the pandemic. Uh, so everything was pretty much virtual. Um, and at the time we, had two separate curriculums for cybersecurity. So it was cybersecurity analytics and cybersecurity engineering. So there were two different things. They weren't um, the same. I think after my class graduated, they switched this. So we were the last class to graduate from cybersecurity engineering and cybersecurity analytics. Now I think it's all one. Not too sure what it's called now, but I think it's just one curriculum now. So now you learn uh, analysis for cybersecurity and engineering for cybersecurity. So that's the first part. Um, so basically, the way it was set up was at least for my curriculum for cybersecurity engineering. Like I said, this is probably totally different, uh, but this is not to this is in the video to kind of review Flatiron. It's more about my personal opinion whether I thought it was worth it or not. So first thing, um, there were five phases. Uh, the first one was cybersecurity fundamentals um, or fundamental skills. Uh, basically, you learn all the basic stuff uh, when it came to like network one on one. Or network security, system security, so that has to do deal with like um, the general system of a computer when it comes to graphics card, CPU, uh, RAM, things like that. You learn all that, the memory, all that. So you learn the basic. You start from the very basic, all the way into basic, knowing the fundamentals of cybersecurity. You also learn uh, applied cryptography. So that will they. I'm pretty sure in, in that curriculum. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. It's been a long time since I've been involved in cybersecurity, but you learn asymmetric, uh, asymmetric and symmetric cryptography. Um, and then you learn all the um, specifics of, you know, symmetric and asymmetric uh, cryptography. It's like RSA, DC, I forgot the name of it, but DC something, but yeah. Uh, and then you learn uh, GRC, which is like the boring part. I call it the boring part of cybersecurity. It's like basically the reporting, the writing down, the uh, making sure that the companies are following the rules of GRC uh things like that and it's basically just like applying rules that cybersecurity sets for companies um each company is very different on what they sent uh like hipaa for example it covers the medical industry um and basically they will cover uh things like pii and phi which is like personal identif identifiable identification and then it's personal health uh identification so that all has to do with the health industry so have you ever heard I'm pretty sure a lot of people have heard of HIPAA. That's um, compliance to the rules and how the medical industry handles um, uh, people's private information when it has to do with their identity and health, um, healthcare or just health information. So uh, you also learn coding language, uh, which is like really weird that we learned it first. Um, actually, I think it was actually better that we learned it first, but we learned Python. Uh, Python was pretty much the only thing we really learned uh, from what I remember, uh, but yes, anyways, the second was cybersecurity intermediate skills. So this will kind of got into like more, a little bit more advanced. You start learning more, going more into depth 
with network security, system security. Still learning applied cryptography, but now we learn more about um, uh, about keys, and uh, then you learn about then moving on from GRC, you went into cyber threat intelligence, then Python. Phase three was cybersecurity skills development, so that's just developing um, uh, developing your skills and, and being able to apply into different things. Still the same thing: system security, network security, apply cryptography. Cyber threat intelligence logs and detection. That was actually really fun. Um, and I think from there, uh, we went into phase four, which is a gray hat hacking, um, a little more pen testing. That was fun as well. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, they actually teach you uh, the actual like methods of, of, of hacking or, or, or pen testing. Um, definitely a lot better than I would say than college, because college really, they kind of, Give you the fundamental knowledge of it um and i may be wrong they might have actual cybersecurity like curriculums now for colleges so if they do great if they don't then it's the same thing um because when i went to college i went to queensboro community college i was doing only um information security technology so we learned one class of cybersecurity, and that class was like the basic of the basic all we really learned was how to detect viruses, how to use antivirus, and how to use a virtual machine. That's pretty much it. Virtual machines and how to use, like how to detect viruses are something that you should already know before going into this. Uh, they will teach you virtual machines, but it, they go, they fly past it. So be ready. If you don't know how to use a virtual machine, I would suggest you use it before you kind of go into a curriculum. You're gonna learn it anyways, but they fly past it. It's a very high paced environment. So just be ready because if you slack off and you fall behind, you're going to feel it. So just be ready for that. This, this is not like when they say that this, this is like, isn't like anything you ever experienced when it comes to like college or just anything in general, they're very true about, it's very true about that because it's very high paced and you fly past things and um, you graduate within four months. It's a boot camp. So the last phase was phase five, which is cybersecurity skills application. This is like I said, kind of everything you learn, you start applying it into everything that you've been learning before. So system security, network security, logs and detection, application security and pen testing. And then ultimately the capstone, which is like the final project. And I'm not gonna give too, too much uh, away about it because it's very, um, it's just, uh, you know, if you guys go to the school, you'll see where it is, but basically the general idea was you work in a team uh you act you it's like a mock um assignment that you were to be given as a cyber security team you work in a team of four or five i believe and you work to detect a certain threat it might have changed now because um everything's mixed into one with analytics and engineering but that's what it was before uh, like i said i'm not gonna give away too much of it but that was the general purpose of it um there are the courses that go through it. I'm not going to go through the courses just because I kind of already went through it through the phases. Uh, but that's kind of like how it went. Um, I'm not going to go through like every spe like through the specifics of every course because um, if I do, I'm going to be giving away information that I shouldn't be and I don't want to get sued. Uh, so yeah. Uh, okay, so to be truthful, um, you know, I'm not gonna say exactly how much I, well, I don't think it really matters, but uh, I paid around, I'm still paying, um, I got a loan. So the school in, in total cost around, if I'm not mistaken, it is a total of 15K. Uh, I took out a loan for almost 18,000. Uh, the, the, purpose of that was that the, the the company that offered me a loan to the school uh, offered me three thousand dollars more to kind of have um i think uh just resources available to me so whether i wanted to buy a computer where i wanted to you know do this and that uh, i had that available to me uh now my personal opinion is that for me in the long run I do not think it was worth it. Uh, I don't mean to drag the company down or the school down. 
uh, they do teach you a lot. You will definitely learn a lot more than you ever will compared to a, um, a regular college or university. I definitely agree on that. And you'll learn things a lot faster than you would going to a college. Uh, I just think it wasn't worth it because it was virtual training. Uh, I think if it was in person, I would have learned a lot more and a lot quicker. And 15K for a school that just offers four months of learning and offers no guaranteed um, certifications. You kind of have to get that on own. They can recommend you what certification you can get, but you kind of have to get that on your own. And um, to be very honest, a lot of the time when you're applying to jobs that are looking for beginner level engineers, cybersecurity engineers, or beginner beginner level security analysis, analysis um, they always value experience over education. It don't matter what what uh, education level you have. You can have a master's, or ba I'm pretty sure there isn't a master's, but let's just say hypothetically speaking, you can have a bachelor's and and have graduated from a boot camp like this. They still will value experience over education. So, in in the long run, I believe that Flatiron is good for you if you want to boost your career. If you already are in the door, you already have a job with cybersecurity, you're already doing the stuff you want to do, and you want to boost your career to the next level, then I would recommend maybe Flatiron. I don't recommend it if you're a beginner. It is very hard to get a job as a beginner. I talk, I'm talking from experience. Um, I like to believe that I'm not a lazy person when it comes to finding a job. <clears throat> I, I have good interview skills, good social skills. Obviously, you need to be knowledgeable as well. But it's just very hard to um, find a job that's willing to take you. Your resume has to look really good, especially because you don't have um, like a professional background. You only have educational background. I, my resume was pretty good, I would say, because I was getting some offers. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, I wouldn't say um, I was getting no job offers. Or I wasn't getting a chance at all. I definitely was. And at the end of the day, it came up, it came down to me and my skills and how I handled the interviews. Um, and I probably could have landed a couple of jobs, but it just, it takes a little bit longer than expected. They do offer a really good um, resource to help you. They, they give you your own personal um, I guess you could say like guidance counselor, but not really. They're more there for like your job. You meet once a week. You kind of give them updates on what, what you've been doing. They work on you with your resume, uh, which is really good. But they still, you still have to put the work in. Obviously, they're not gonna go out and apply for you. So keep that in mind. Uh, these these uh counselors are not there to do the work for you. They're there to give you the advice, the support. But you still have to put the work in to find a job. Um. I think I forgot to mention too, as like throughout, like the the way that the flattering was set with the school was also like you had teachers for each of the curriculum. Um, sometimes it would be repeated, like the same teachers. Uh, so if you landed one bad teacher, you know you pretty much have to suffer through that. Which obviously every college is like that. The course had one okay teacher that I didn't really like, so um, kind of have to deal with that. Uh, but yeah, that's how kind of how it was set up. Then we had a lab instructor, which he was kind of more like the homeroom teacher. If you've ever been to like high school and stuff like that, which I'm pretty sure everybody has been. Uh, you have like a home a homeroom teacher, but he's more of a lab instructor. So he was there with us every day after, because after each um, class, we had a lab at the end. And it was almost like homework, but not really, because you could get it done during lab time and they didn't really have homework for you, for yourself. So it was a lot of hands-on training, which is really fun and really benefited us and engraving the knowledge in our head. Okay, so anyways, um, basically, uh, with the whole job situation, uh, I do believe that you can absolutely land a job um, with Flatiron or without Flatiron. Uh, I believe that it's better that you get professional experience first, and by that I mean you don't have to go out and get an internship that's not being, that you're not being paid for. You don't have to go out and um, find a job in like low level tech. My recommendation is going on to websites like Hack the Box or Try to Hack Me. Those count as professional experience now. So if you're able to go onto those websites and there probably is more, I just know the two 
main industry ones, which is try to hack me and hack the box. Those things count like professional experience now. So if we can go on there and get a decent amount of time in and actually earn badges and earn, uh, I guess like rewards or accomplishments from the website, you can show that off on your resume and also show that off while you're interviewing. And like I said, those count as professional experience. Not, not every job will count it as professional experience, but most of them will. So I would definitely, if you have a good profile uh, on that, I would definitely recommend showing that off to your interviewer or to the company you're interviewing for. Because most of the time, and it's better than, than not having anything, they will count that as professional experience. So I definitely recommend doing hack the box and try to hack me. If you don't know what those are, I can explain it in a different video. Uh, but you can also just go on the website itself. It's pretty self-explanatory and it's fun as well. So if you're really into cybersecurity, really fun place to learn. Um, when it comes to certifications, uh, some companies do require them, but not all of them. And sometimes when they say they're required, they're not really required. They also just like to see experience. They, like I said, everybody, values more experience than you do anything else. Uh, but when it comes to the certifications, I recommend you were to get one, but I recommend saying to like the low, the basic ones, you don't really need like a CISSP. Um, I would get like a security plus. Uh, I would also get like a um, network plus from CompTIA uh, or CompTIA, however you want to call it. Uh, they are, you, you obviously you do have to pay for them. So keep that in mind. Uh, so I, Flatiron does not offer any certifications, like I said. It might be different now, I'm not too sure. Uh, but there are schools that offer these certifications. And I would say, look into that. Uh, because if you can go to a school that you're paying almost the same amount as Flatiron, but you're being offered certifications, it might be better. So I would definitely check, I would research a lot before choosing one school. I'm not saying don't choose Flatiron, but I'm also not saying choose Flatiron. I'm just saying do your research because a lot of schools offer certifications and Flatiron doesn't. Like I said, this is uh, two years later, so they might offer it now. So I would do my research, like I said. Uh, but that's just my experience when I was in Flatiron. They didn't offer any, um, any certifications. Uh, you have to go and get that on your own. They do give information on what certifications you should get as a beginner or as an intermediate or whatever level you're at as a cybersecurity professional. But that's just my experience right there. Uh, so yeah, at the end of the day, uh, that's my opinion. I really uh, do not think, I'm not, I don't wanna say it's not, it wasn't worth it. Uh, it's just, if the price was, if the tuition of the, the school was a little bit lower, I definitely would have re would recommend it more. But because the tuition was so high for a virtual class learning environment, uh, don't really think it was worth it. Um, but like I said, you know, don't be discouraged if you're a beginner and you want to get into education. You want to get the educational side first and then get professional experience. Don't be discouraged. Go for it. Um, but if you're not really in that oh well of a good financial situation, it's very risky to go into a school like this and then try to get a job afterwards. Um, unless you can't afford it, then I would say go for it. Uh, but like I said, I would go down the route first of trying to get your professional experience to hack the box or try to hack me. Those websites really, really do help and really will improve your skill and give you a resume for say. Um, I would also recommend, you know, joining volunteer groups. Sometimes you can find volunteer groups through uh, events that I think is event, event by, Eventbrite, and then there's meetups. Uh, those can offer you volunteer options where you can volunteer for a company and you get a professional experience like that Yeah, it doesn't pay you but you have experience right there um, But I definitely recommend trying to hack me and hack the box uh, So if, to me flat iron was not worth it uh, Especially after I graduated I kind of learned the process learned everything and learned that you can really just get into cybersecurity without getting an education you can get in by just having the experience and you can be interviewed and, and hired pretty quickly and probably even faster than a graduate from a university or even a bootcamp. So yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I wanna say thank you so much for 135 subscribers. Thank you for the support that you guys have been giving me. Feeling much better. 
I uh, hope you guys are having a good week, a good day, good weekend, wherever you, whenever you're watching this. And remember to be present in the moment. Forget about the past. The future is still the future. Be in the moment. Be present. Thank you, guys. See you on the next one.